Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Unrooted Women's Volleyball Edition and my guest for this week's show was none other than senior outside hitter on the women's volleyball team Sophia Salim. Sophia, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Thank you for having me Brian, I'm really excited. Well, let's start by getting to know you a little bit better now. This is your senior season as an Oak after you transferred over here from Guadalajara. It might have been a long time ago, but what made you decide to take your talents to Menlo College? Um, well, after I started college back home, I always felt like I didn't want to settle with just staying there, you know, like I always felt like I don't want to do what everyone else is doing, just mm -hmm. going to college here and like um, hang out with the same people. And I always had this feeling of like going further and further and I knew volleyball was going to be like, um, like the opportunity for me to do that. And um, I just felt like I, I wanted to and I've been studying English for so long that I felt like, okay, maybe language not going to be a, a barrier for me. Um, so I contacted this recruitment agency and then uh, started my recruitment process and I um, sent out a video and then the assistant coach for Menlo at that time, he reached out to me and he talked about my opportunities here in Menlo and I said, why not? And then I came here for the visit and I really liked the place, I liked the area. Um, you know, Silicon Valley and like just the environment here is very like family mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so that's why I was like, why not? I might just do it. Now volleyball certainly has kept you busy here at Menlo, but it also was back there. One of the last blurbs on your website bio says that you were a National Olympics participant. Tell me about that. Well, um, in Mexico, there's this like big national tournament, tournament that it's called uh, the National Olympics. It's basically run by the National Sports Committee. And it's like a tournament that brings together like all the athletes from like all the states. But the, the first stage is the regionals. So you compete the regionals and the team that wins the regionals uh, gets to compete in the national, like representing that region. Mm -hmm. And I had the chance to represent my state in 2016. And I was going to say like it's, it's just a really cool thing to be a part of, you know, like you get to meet so many athletes from like, around the country and the level of competition is really high. So... Now, how did you do there and how did the team do? Well, we did okay. <laughs> like it wasn't our best um, part participation, I would say, because we lost in group phase, but you know, at least um, like parties participating, it's always like really good experience. And just, you know, you get to travel around, you get to, know, to go somewhere else to like play volleyball. And I think that's always really good. That's awesome. Now, conference play is in full swing for the Oaks, and Menlo split the first two last weekend against Hope and Life Pacific. Does getting that win on Saturday help boost the team's mood going into week two? For sure. I think we're all really, really excited about going on this week. Um, and I think winning that game just was a little bit of a taste of like what's coming up. You know, I think we were all like, whoa, like conference already started, like this is our time to bring it. And I think we're all really excited. And we just know that from now on, it's just gonna get better. Like we're just gonna get better and we're just excited. Um, we've talked about our goals for this season. And I think uh, as of right now, we're like up to a good start. Now this next question might be one of the toughest I've asked so far this year. So I apologize in advance, but three of the four matches so far, the Oaks have dropped the opening set. Do you spot a particular reason why you guys have come out of the gate a little slow only to then pick up and force at least a set four or five? Um, yeah, we've talked about this a lot and I think um, it's been taking us a little bit longer to recognize the other team's tendencies and like use them to our advantage. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what like be, we've been like a little bit like, you know, not playing our volleyball at the beginning, but I mean, as I said, like we've talked about it and we know that what we need is to like start off strong and like no matter who we're playing, we'll, we should be able to bring our Menlo volleyball and we're, we had a conversation about this and I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> well, let's hope so this week with the Oaks having three more games down in Southern California. Uh, the lineup has seen, has seen a little bit of a shuffle to it here the past couple of games. So that's forced you to pick up some of the slack and you've responded by getting 10 plus kills in both starts last week. What has helped you gotten off to a great start in 2018? Um, you know, um, I'm, I'm used to playing both bands, like outside and right side, like that's what I do in practice too. So taking on that spot last week was not something new for me. 
um, and I think a lot of it it's it's teamwork you know like I communicate a lot with the setters like I always try to give them feedback after every wall so like we're connecting better and my teammates also they're like they've been really helpful they always telling me what's open or like letting me know what the block is taking so like I always know where to hit and I feel like that's that's what helped me like be successful last week. Now, two of the three games this week are against Vanguard and San Diego Christian. Vanguard is the big ticket item on the list this week. They're ranked, and they finished above you last year in the standings. What will it take to bring them down? Um, I think that something that's going to be a, a key for this week would be recovery and taking care of our bodies. Because as I was telling you, we're on a trip for four days, and we have matches back to back. And I think that as long as we take care of, of our bodies, like we're going to do well. And once again, like we need to start off strong. Like we need to um, think that we're gonna have to battle every point and like just take it one point at a time. And like point one is as important as point 25. So as long as we keep that in mind, I think we're gonna be able to bring them down. All right, Sophia, let's get into the final segment of the show. It's called Brownie Bites. I'm gonna ask you three off the wall questions. Give me your best answers. Hi. Question number one, which teammate would create the most unique Olympic sport? That's a hard one. Um, I'm gonna go with Jaden Scott just because I think she's a very creative person mm -hmm. and she's the kind of person that like gets things done. So if someone asks ask her to like come up with something like this, I think she'll find a way. Like she'll come up with something for sure. Do you have any idea what kind of sport she might try to create? Uh, not really. Like maybe. I'm guessing it would be something along the lines of pen or pencils. Maybe because you know, as you as you yes. already know, she's like um, the person that always has a pen with her. Yeah. So maybe it's like a doodling sport yeah. if you could even turn that into maybe. a sport. I don't know how you could create drawing and doodles and stick figures into that, but I'm sure maybe you could, she could find yeah. a way. Yeah, I think that that's a good idea. For sure. All right. Question number two: Which teammate hates Mexican food the most? I'm gonna say. No one, because Good I think answer. everyone, Good answer. everyone in our team like loves Mexican food. And honestly, Brian, who could possibly hate? Mexican I food? I don't know. I personally right? have no idea how anyone could hate it exactly. because every single aspect of it is delicious. It's Good. my favorite type Good. of food, Good. hands down. Good. And then question number three: Which teammate is most likely to own a chocolate fountain? Maggie McDonald, a hundred percent. She has the biggest obsession with chocolate, and I'm like. I'm like shocked that she hasn't gotten into a sugar coma yet. Like, she's like really obsessed. She's crazy about chocolate. Then she would have loved the dessert that was in the cafeteria today. What was it? There were like these chocolate fudge brownies or something. It was like not quite fudge, not quite brownies. It was like in the middle and it had some white chocolate chips in there too. Maybe she got it, you know, you never know with Maggie. It's like, she goes to the cafeteria and grabs like two, three cookies and you're like, Maggie, like we already know, you know, like that's her thing. Chocolate's just her thing. There's nothing wrong with grabbing two or three cookies, Maggie, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Sophia, thank you for joining me on the show. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank Folks, you. the women's volleyball team, they're on the road this weekend down in Southern California and the big games are wrapping up the week on Friday and Saturday. Friday night, 7.30, the Oaks take on San Diego Christian College and Conference play and then a very quick turnaround the next day in the afternoon, they take on Van Vanguard University, a ranked team, and they finished number two in the GSAC last season. We invite you to tune into next week's episode when Sophia Salim will select the next interviewee by me, Brian Brownfield, right here on Unrooted Women's Volleyball Edition. Until then, we'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. Right up on my